please welcome back Sadaf Faraki. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> so this is your uh, your feature debut. Um, uh, you'd made a number of uh, of short films uh, before this, um, and in addition to directing and producing this film, you were also uh, its writer. Um, could you talk a bit about um, about the writing process? And I'd be curious to hear uh, how personal how personal you feel the uh, the narrative in the film is for you. Um, it's very personal. It, it is very personal. It's not a autobiographical. It's not a documentary, but. It, yeah, it is, yes, <laughs> it is very personal, although it's not documentary and it's not a, an autobiographical film, but um, you can see me here. Um, I started to write Ava in September 2014, um, and then uh, I suddenly found myself in front of this story. I think normally we hide uh, or we don't want to listen to some some part of us, and um, and so this is the story that came to me and wanted to be uh, pictured. Um, the Ava, I write uh, the script um, as a piece of music, as a variation in music. So the the technique I use is the technique that normally we use in, in, in the variation. And that's why I used um, the variation and classical music in the film, uh, basically. And yeah. So then, um, presumably you, were not, you weren't writing with uh, specific performers in mind, or perhaps I'm wrong. But, um, but I'd be curious to hear from you about how uh, the casting proceeds for a film, a film uh, like this, uh, and and also just you know, uh, I'd like to hear from you about uh, working with the young performers in the film. Um, yeah, they are basically, except uh, the adults, actually mother, uh, the father, and also the principal. They are all all non actors, actresses. Um, I didn't have them in mind, but I knew exactly what I wanted for Ava. Um, very. I would like to have a very special expression, someone who understands the story, and someone who plays violin. So it was a little bit difficult to find these um, all together. Um, I went to Tehran, now I live in Canada, but I had to go to Tehran um, several times um, to, to find my Ava. And then I went to to different spec, um, like theater, um, and uh, because I wanted to pl to work with theater actors and actresses, uh, I knew um, um, the principal before. She's a very nice and a gentle woman. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I know her from my childhood, although she's very young, uh, but she has some puppets, um, and she's lovely. Anyway, we worked uh, hard. I had 45 days with Ava, and uh, then I add little by little other actors and actresses, and how I work with them was basically, it was all based on, on some kind of plays, except with uh, Ava that we analyze the, the, the story, we analyze all the, the dialogues, um, because she had to understand why. Um, as you see, we have different layer in the, in the script. We have dialogues, and it works for itself. We have scenes, and then I added color, and um, camera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I had to be sure that she understand everything. Um, before we start shooting. And so for the shooting, I didn't have lots of money. That's why I had a long process of pre-production with very little budget, and they all helped me. Um, and we had 19 days of shooting. We didn't shoot one day. Uh, we had 18 days. Yeah, I mean, um, the, uh, the film sort of uh, abounds with with very strong visual ideas um, 
there are all sorts are all sorts of things in the film. There are shots in canted angles. You play with the, the focal length in various scenes. These, these wide sort of tableau like images and reflections and mirrors within within the frame and so on. So, I, uh, could you talk a bit about your collaboration with your with your cinematographer? Uh, I believe it's Sina Kramanazade, right? Yeah. It was uh, lovely, he's talented, he's wonderful, and I knew exactly what I wanted. So I had basically what you see here, um, since I have a plastic art background, I recreate also some painting. Um, so we talked about it and we knew, I, he knew exactly, he knew exactly what I wanted, um, but he had, of course, because he, is, he has a very good eye. Um, and he came, uh, during the rehearsal, and he just sat down and, and looked uh, what we do. But it was very well planned. I knew exactly what I wanted. And basically, I um, um, design the shots um, based on the feeling or emotions. Um, I wanted this. This is this is one of the layer of the film. I wanted to add pressure little by little. As you see that we crop um, this the sequences little by little. So th the whole idea was to um, put the pressure on Ava and I'm sorry to the to the audiences <laughs> by by the picture itself. And we can take some questions from the audience. Uh, just raise your hand, we'll bring you a microphone. Yeah. First off, I, I'm just very, very impressed by how clear-eyed and unsentimental this film is. I mean, it's, it's so different and so unexpected from other films that I've seen, particularly from Iran, about, um, from Iranian filmmakers about uh, uh, childhood and, and, and teenagers and uh, how uncondescending it is. Um, but I'm just wondering, where, where was this shot? Was it shot in Iran or? or it, is, it is totally shot in Iran, yes. It was, okay. I was looking in the, in the, towards the end of the credits. I, I, I thought maybe it was shot in Canada and, and uh, uh, okay, I'm, thank no. you. Yeah, no. Um, so the school uh, has 100 years old, and it's a Jewish school, basically. And then now I think it's a little bit mixed, but it's a very go old and beautiful school. Um, I didn't want to go uh, to the... I didn't want actually to reduce people to their small society. So I tried to find places that we don't see them regularly in the Iranian film. Um, and I wanted to, I try to make it uh, as universal as I can. Over here. You told about all these restrictions about the main actress. So can you describe the process of picking her? Uh, the process of? Picking the main actress. Yeah, of course. It took uh, almost a year before I find her, um, and I went. Um, I had to wait for the permission, shooting permission, before going to the schools, and to be able to talk with the students. So I went to the school, and I didn't have the permission. So I just stand in the corner and I looked around to see if I can find my my Ava, and I couldn't. <laughs> I went to different uh, conservatoire. I went to some private uh, music school, um, and I didn't find Ava. And I find it like very by accident. She came to see a friend in a in a cinema school, private cinema school. And it was my hour. How did you know, how did you know she plays music? Uh, by friends. They present Ava to me and say, look, Sadaf, she's 16. We know that you're looking for someone 17, but maybe she fits. And say, OK, maybe we can talk and we chat. She's very timid and uh, very calm, uh, but she's very talented. Uh, congratulations. I think it was a beautiful, beautifully uh, done job. Um, I, have, I have actually a lot of questions. Uh, first of all, I think, if 
from my experiences, Iranian mothers are a lot more uh, violent, if you will, than what you portray. Uh, I'm sure there are variations. Uh, there are variations, but from what I've heard, uh, uh, actually, if there was a uh, girl like Ava around, she would have been hit several times by her mother. So um, that's, that's one side of the story that, that, um, that I've heard of. The second question that I have is um, whether or not you had, you had a chance to speak to other uh, uh, female directors like Rakhshan uh, Bani Etemah or, or other female directors and whether you, um, um, you, you exchanged some ideas about these films and what did they think and what did you think about your conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I respect your idea about Iranian mother, uh, but I don't agree. <laughs> My mother is very kind, like all women around the world. And I think um, Ava's mother is just trying to save Ava, uh, like other women in Iran, if there is any problem. Um, but I respect your idea very much. It's your point of view, and I have mine. Um, uh, I didn't exchange any. I, I, uh, I have a little talk with Rakhshan Bani Etemad concerning the, the process of the permission, actually. But I normally don't watch a lot Iranian film, and I don't, um, I'm not very, unfortunately, in relationship with all of them, especially I didn't have the chance to talk with them about the film. But they are very nice and lovely and supportive. Well, thank you. I like this film a lot, and uh, uh, I mean, you've already you've already spoken a bit about about sort of technical things and and reasons for that. I mean, I was especially interested in your use of focus, uh, which I felt was rather unusual at times. Um, but what I, I'm I'm curious about, since I don't really know how this works in Iran, did you have to get since you shot it in Iran, did you have to get script approval? Was there any censorship concerns, and was there anything that you couldn't do that you wanted to do in the film. Thank you. Uh, no, this is the original uh, script. Of course, when we gave the script to the, you have to go and give the, the script to the authority and they have to check everything. And I guess ev like everywhere else, they have their own regulation. That's why I respect it very much. But I didn't change uh, even a, a word of the film, yeah. Uh, you made a film about the universality of adolescence and the struggle of adolescents uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a world where very often adults uh, have a conflict, their own desires and the desires of their adolescent children. But I wondered, were you, were you making a statement also about growing up in Iran? I mean, there is certainly a reality that you portray there about you know, a more repressive society. But at the same time, I found the theme to be more universal regardless of where uh, it takes place. And I wondered if you could comment about that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think um, the, the, it's, a, it's a tradition story less than the society, Iranian today. My mother had the same restriction uh, her mother had. So it's like, it's very, very traditional, um, basically. And uh, yes, as you said, I think what, what, what makes this film um, universal is the relationship between two generations, between the mother and the daughter, the struggle of women to find their place in the society in general, and an adolescent, adolescent to find herself, her femininity. They are lost at 14, 16, you're lost. And it's, it is even difficult uh, at the, anywhere else, and more, I guess, in a traditional society, traditional home. Um, so I think, uh, and that's why I, I put people in 
in a struggle and I just listen to them and um, yeah, it works. <laughs> in the back in the red. Yeah, I was just wondering, you had a, a couple scenes in there where you had some really long takes. Uh, I was just wondering why, why you chose that, if there actually, if there was a, a reason why you chose to, to do that. I'm sorry, I think I didn't understand. So the motivation for using long takes? Oh, long takes, yeah. Um, because long takes, and several things that I, the first is that I don't like the film that basically want to put pressure on the audiences by cutting a lot. You know, um, you feel, um, I guess you should leave the, the scene and listen uh, to the phrases of the picture and whenever it's finished, it's the, the point and then you start new paragraph. That's why I didn't want to cut it and cut it. I cut it when it was needed. And the second is when there is long takes, the pressure, you feel more pressure. Um, they are framed in a cadre and they cannot move, literally. Did the, the gentleman in the red wanna? No? About the autobiographic, it is very personal. It is very personal, uh, what I observed and uh, what I, I, I lived. So it both, it is, it is very personal story. And uh, the gentleman who's sitting between the two, who just. <laughs> so my question is sociological, you know, how representative is this? Is this 1% of Iranian society or 10%, is this a story about Tehran or is it about Iran generally? Are these the same people who are reading Lolita and Tehran or is this a different crowd? Nice. Uh, no, it's a story of human being and their relationship, their fears, their doubts, um, the motherhood, the, the childhood, um, the story of a family anywhere, I think. So I think we have time for another question or two. Uh, here in the black, in the middle. Uh, during production, did you allow any space for improvisation with your actors or did you stick to the script altogether? Because there are some scenes where it feels very organic and it feels like those lines can like not be written. They're like of the moment. It was, uh, it was written, we stick to the, the, to the dialogues. That's why we had 45 days of rehearsal. I'm strict because um, they should know, the, as I said, um, the dialogues work in a, a layer, so it must, be, it must be there. We couldn't change anything. And we didn't have time also to, to, the, to change anything at all. Of course, the girls add some some bad words, <laughs> this is not mine sometimes. I had some others which are like old fashioned <laughs> and I accept it, of course. We have time for one more. Um, the red scarf. Thanks for a really fascinating film. Um, what's next? Yes, I have a trilogy actually, otherwise the, the first part of my uh, pictorial symphony, if I can say. I have my second movement, I hope I, I'll be able to shoot it in summer, I think I will. And it's about a mother and a son in, in Iran. And that is a perfect place for us to, for, to leave it, so thank you, Sadaf. Thank you.